Alright, so this week you're going to be working on an Access database and I want to give you just a short little preview of how you're going to complete your project. First of all, you're going to click on week 12 because today is April 12th. And make sure you look over the objectives for this week which are listed here for you. You can also click the link here to open up the lecture slides for Access Chapter 1. That kind of gives you an overview of the important um, concepts from the chapter in your book. You also want to make sure that you actually read through Access Chapter 1 in your book, as well as complete the Access Chapter 1 training available in SAM if you have not already done that. But hopefully you did that sometime over spring break. One thing that you're going to have to turn in for this week is the Access Chapter 1 Lab 1. Now, you are not going to be completing this in SAM. You instead are going to be um, doing it straight from your book. So you can get the directions for this lab in two places. One of them is by looking in your book on the Access section of your book on page 66. The other way is by logging into Cengage, which I'm logged into here, and you can open up either CourseMate to get into your book, or you can just click on the interactive ebook. And even if I'm using the interactive ebook, I'm going to get to the chapter directions the same way. I can click on contents and scroll down and find Access Chapter 1, or since I know that it's on Access page 66, I can just type in AC space 66 to go straight to that page, and as you can see, here's what my directions will look like. And what you are going to be working on this week is in the lab, Lab 1. Now it tells you that you're going to need um, some files that have already been created for you. A database and a table have already been created for you, but there's no data in the table, and you are going to create an additional tab table in the database. You're also going to import data from an Excel workbook straight into your database, and that Excel workbook has been um, created for you you can download the files that you need from a couple different places. One of those places would be from that student data file CD that came with your book. Another place would be to go to Cengage and click on the student companion site and you would find the data files that you need there. But probably the easiest way to get the files that you need is going to be straight from Blackboard because I've linked both of the files for you. So what you'll need to do is click on each of these files and just go ahead and open them up and as you can see my access database I'm going to have to enable the content so I can edit it and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to save that whole database um, to wherever I save things. So in your case, if you're in class, you're probably going to save it to a flash drive. Um, since I'm on my computer that I work from and I don't have a flash drive plugged in, I'm just going to save it to my documents and I'm going to save it as ECO clothesline and then I'm just going to add my name to the end of it and click save. So now the database is saved, but I need to do the same thing to this spreadsheet. So again, I'm going to click on it since I'm in Chrome, it shoots it down to the bottom, and I'm just going to click on it to open it up. Make sure it downloaded OK. There's my spreadsheet. So I'm just going to save it to the same place, which in my case was my Documents folder that I saved the Access Database. It's really important that you remember where you saved this Excel spreadsheet because one of the first things that you're going to be doing is importing data from it. So now I just want to show you a few things about how to complete this assignment. So to do that I'm going to pull access back up. And you can see again here that I'm going to have to make sure that I actually click enable content 
so that I can get some work done on my database. So once I have my database open, the first thing that the assignment asks me to do is to import um, the Lab 1-1 Customer Data Workbook. That's that Excel file. So let me show you how easy it is to import data into a table that you already have created. We already have a customer table, but if I double click on it to open it up, you can see there's no data here. So I'm going to click on External Data, and I'm importing data from an Excel spreadsheet that has already been created. So I'm going to click Excel, and now it's asking me, well, where is the Excel spreadsheet that you want to import from? So I'm going to click Browse, and I remember that it was saved in the My Documents folder. Again, yours might be on your flash drive. This would be wherever you saved it. There is that lab that I saved. I'm just going to click Open. And I just want to go ahead and add it to that table that has already been created. Since I've opened that table, it's going to tell me it has to close the table first, and that's absolutely fine. Um, and you can see here that this is kind of what it's going to look like once it's finished. I'm importing it to the customer table. And once I hit finish, and I close, now when I click on that customer table, all of my data is there. That just saves me from having to type anything in, which is great. Now, also in this assignment, you're going to be adding captions to several of your fields. Remember, our fields are listed here. We have customer number, customer name, street, city, state, postal code, balance, amount paid, and even more. All of those are fields. And then we have our records listed here. So this is record one, this is record two, this is record three, and so on. To add captions and make lots of changes to my field properties, the easiest way to do that is going to be to click on the View button and switch from Datasheet View over to Design View. So for example, if it asks me to add a caption to the Customer Number field, then I want to select Customer Number field and then under the Field Properties pane, go to Caption and type in whatever I want um, the caption to be. In this case, I believe it asks me to add the caption Customer and then the pound sign for number. And then when I'm ready or finished making all of my changes here to my properties, I just go to View and change my view back to Data Sheet View. It's going to automatically prompt me to save the table, which is great. I'm going to say, yes, I do want to save it. And now I have those captions there for me and any other changes that I've made. Resizing columns is going to be done just the same way it was in Excel. As you can see, I can click to drag. I can double click to auto fit. Or I can right click and choose um, field width and type in exactly what I want. I can also from here create more tables. So you're going to be asked to create a table um, called Sales Rep. So to do that I would just click Create and choose Table. And now I have a second table. It's as simple as that. To add fields to my table, I can either just click and change them to what I need them to be. So I want this one to be maybe a text field, and I'm going to name it, oops, last. Or, if you're more comfortable with it, even though the book says to use data sheet view, which is the view we're in, if you're more comfortable um, adding fields in design view, that is absolutely fine. You'll just click View and switch on over to Design View. At that point, you will have to save your table. So I believe this one is going to be named Sales Rep. And then you can add any of your fields from here. You can change the data type, do whatever you need to do here. Do remember that um, it's automatically going to assign a primary key. So just make sure that you pay attention in your instructions as to which field needs to be the primary key. 
And again, any changes you need to make, such as field size, captions, um, anything like that format is going to be here in the field properties pane. In this assignment, you are also going to be creating queries and reports. So very quickly, to create a query, you're going to be clicking create and using the query wizard. From there, you will simply choose the table that you're doing your query for, select the fields that the assignment asks for, name it, whatever the assignment asks for, and once you click finish, here is your query. To create a, a report, you can do pretty much the same thing. You can, under the Create tab, use the Report Wizard, um, choose your table that you're pulling your information from, choose the fields that need to be shown on your report, sort if you're told to sort. I'm just going to leave it as is and not do any sorting at this time name it whatever you want to and once you click finish here's your report so you're just going to do the very basics with um, adding tables adding records queries and reports the one thing i am asking you to do in this assignment is instead of submitting the whole database although you do need to make sure to save it in case you need to come back to it later you're going to submit two files to me you are going to be submitting as it says here in Blackboard, the customer balance report that you create and the query that you create. And you're going to submit those as PDF files. So to do that, you will simply click on the query that you run and then right click on it, tell it to export as a PDF file and it's going to ask you to give it a name. You can leave it named as is. Just add your name to the end of it. Save it where you normally save things. And once you click publish, now when I go to my documents folder, let me bring it up for you. I have a PDF file called customer query. Here it is and you're going to do the same thing for the report and I have it, oh here's my report so I can right click on it export, export it as a PDF just add my name and save it to my computer wherever I normally save things to submit to Blackboard you are going to click here on the assignment name and down here in the submission box you're going to click browse and then you will go and find wherever you saved those PDF files make sure it's the PDF file and you're going to submit them you'll click once to add the first one and then you'll click browse again and select the second one so now you can see both of those are attached and when you're ready to submit simply click submit and that's all there is to the project that you're going to be creating um, this week.